Hello everyone, this is Wes James here, also known as MMK1985, and I'm here today to present you with my very first tutorial. Uh, in today's tutorial, we're going to be learning how to do diagonal split screens in Final Cut Pro, and here's an example of what we'll be doing today. Alright, I'm in Final Cut Pro, and I'm using some clips from artbeats.com, and these are SD clips, but this effect also works on HD clips as well. So I provided the download link for the diagonal mat that we're going to be using later on in this project. So you, if you all need to adjust it to match your clips, whether they be PAL or HD, then feel free to do so. So I have my three clips assembled in a timeline right now, and I've had them, I have them staggering one after another. So the first clip you see is a surfer, second clip you see is a businesswoman, and the third clip you see is a biker coming downhill. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to select the surfer clip, which is our first clip on track one, and hit the keyboard shortcut control S to solo it. The surfer now is the only clip that is visible and not only the canvas window, but also on the timeline as the other clips have been disabled. Next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to go to our effects browser, go to video filters, scroll down, go to perspective, select basic 3D and drag it over into the filters box. Next, we're going to want to go to the Mat folder, open it, go to the Image Mask filter, click and select it, and drag it into the Filters box. Right now, the Image Mask is trying to mask out the image, but it doesn't have a mask well to do so, so this is where the Diagonal PSD document that I provided you guys with comes in handy. So we're going to want to go to our Project Browser. I've already imported the Diagonal, P I've already imported the diagonal PSD into my project. So you know you all could do that as well. And what we're going to want to do is select the diagonal PSD, hit the keyboard shortcut option D, and duplicate it twice. So now we have three copies of our diagonal PSD. And we want to select the first one, hit enter, and rename it diagonal left. We're going to want to go to the second copy, hit enter, and rename it diagonal middle. Same thing with our third copy. Rename it, Diagonal Right. All right, so now we have three copies of our, of our Diagonal PSD sequence, you know, ready to be used for this effect. So we're going to want to open the first one, which is Diagonal Left. And we're going to want to zoom in the timeline so we can see what we're, we can read what we have on the tracks. And what we're going to want to do is select the background track, and diagonal left and hit the keyboard shortcut control S. This will solo the diagonal left shape as well as the background, making them the only visible things on in the canvas and on this sequence. So we're gonna to want to hit the, hit the keyboard shortcut control W to close this tab. Go into diagonal middle, do the same thing. Select the background, but this time inside diagonal left, select diagonal middle and hit control and hit control S to solo it. So they're the only two things that are visible. Hit control W again to Close the tab, go into di the diagonal right sequence, hit control T, or option T to bring the uh, keyframe overlays away, hit uh, command plus to zoom in on the timeline, select the background, and select diagonal right, and hit the keyboard shortcut, control S to solo it, and hit control W to close the tab. So now, we have our image mat ready for our image mask wells to be used for this effect to be executed. So what we're going to want to do next is we're going to want to select the diagonal left, click and drag it into the mask well for the image mask filter, and there you go. It's already it's masked the it's masked the surfer clip, and the only things you can see right now is whatever the mask that we have is providing. So we only get this section in a diagonal cut shape for this clip. So this is where the basic 3D plugin comes in. You hit the center crosshair to adjust it. So we highlight a portion of the clip that we want. So I want to highlight the surfer. So I'm going to hit on the crosshair, hold down shift, and drag it accordingly. So I see mostly the surfer in it. All right, so you know I've used the basic 3D center crosshair to drag, to drag the clip so only the surfer is present. And we've highlighted him surfing. So he's the most visible, visible figure on this clip right now. But also, as well, as much as, as cool as it is to use the center, crosshair to adjust the clip, there are drawbacks. If you drag it like so, if you drag it too, too far down, 
too far up, too far left, or too far right, then the image match starts to break and you start to lose the effect and start to, stop, start to lose the illusion. So be careful and be cautious with that. All right. <clears throat> we got our diagonal cut on the left side taken care of. Now we need to take care of the middle. So we're going to re-enable the businesswoman clip. We're going to select her. She's on track two. Hit the keyboard shortcut control B. And now she's been activated. So we're going to select our first clip, the AB surfing guy. Right click, copy, select the businesswoman clip, hit the keyboard shortcut option V, select filters for paste attributes and hit OK. So now, now the woman has inherited the attributes of the first clip and she's also cut out as well, but we need to fix that so she could be in the diagonal middle. So we're going to double click the clip, we're going to change the center to zero, zero, and we're going to change the mask to diagonal middle, so go to your project browser, select it, and drag it into the image mask well. And now her clip has been centered. We're highlighting the portion of her that we want, which is her face, and which is her face and most of you know what we want to highlight in this clip. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to right click the copy on the second clip, enable the third clip by hitting the keyboard shortcut control B. And then we're going to hit Option V to paste attributes and paste the filters and hit OK. So now our biker downhill has inherited the attributes of our second clip. All we need to do now is change the mask. So we double click the clip to bring it into the viewer. Use the diagonal right PSD sequence. Select it in your project browser and drag it into your image mask well. And there you go. Now you have all the clips in their own diagonal cuts, in their own separate split screens and they're highlighting the portions of the clips that we want them to go. All right, so now that we have all our, now that we have our clips in their respective split screens, we're now gonna to need to animate them in in a way that's just more than a cut. So for the, for the example that you saw me use earlier, I used a transition called the push slide, and you can find that by going to video transitions, scrolling down and going to push slide, going down to the slide folder and selecting the push slide transition. We're gonna take it, click and drag it over, put it on the, head of the first, put on the end point of the first clip, double click it, change the duration to 18 frames, change the angle to 135, so now when the clip comes in, it's coming in at an angle of 135. Now we're going to apply the exact same transition to the second clip, but and all we have to do is just go to this icon right here in the viewer, drag it down to the end point of the second clip, and there we have, now they share the same exact transition. So when they come in, you see the first clip coming in at the 135 angle, and then you see the second clip coming in at the 135 angle. But we run into an issue. Now the second clip is overlapping when it comes into its destination. So we need to change the angle on the second clip to transition. So double click the second transition, second, double click the second clip's transition, change the angle to 155. And now when it animates in, there is no overlap and it's not coming on top of it. And we're going to apply the exact same transition to our third clip so we don't run into that issue as well. So we have our transition, we have our split screen, so all we have to do now is just render. So, you know, I'm operating in unlimited RT. If you're operating in safe RT, you can hit uh, Command R or Option R to render all. So let's render it. We're supposed to play head back and hit the space bar or L key to play forward. And there you go. With this effect, you can use it in music videos, you can use it in short films, action shorts, viral videos, what have you. But I like this effect because you know it's much more abstract than just doing the standard split screen using the crop and scale tool. So I learned how to do this by watching a, a tutorial on YouTube. I'm going to reference him in the link below using the image mask and I just saw a lot more possibilities with it than just, you know, doing an image bubble. So use this effect in your videos. Let me know what you think. Send me a video response, what have you. And uh, I'll check you all later. So this is my first tutorial. You know, y'all keep what you watch this. Y'all comment, rate it, what have you. And, you know, hopefully I could bring much more to the table in the future. So 
I'll check you all later.